Good afternoon, and thank you very much for um, inviting me, for allowing to talk to you about uh, challenges of uh, leading projects. Now, my life has a number of projects in it, and I'm going to start with what I do um, that justifies my uh, uh, title of neuroanatomist, um, and that is research in dementia. And what drives me to do that is this um, uh, fact, uh, the observation that dementia is the leading cause of death for women in the UK. Um, and actually, uh, there are 500,000 women in the UK that, that suffer with dementia, um, and proportionally, of course, worldwide out of the 50 million. So from that point of view, that drives my, my work every day uh, in, 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 in the word uh, leader. On the left, you've got a section of a human brain uh, from a patient with dementia, and on the right is a section of a normal brain. So needless to say that um, the, 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 the differences are major, drastic. Uh, there's a loss of, of um, uh, brain tissue. But most importantly, if you zoom into the brain with dementia, you will see deposition of essentially waste products. We produce these products. We produce these sticky amyloid plaques. And they deposit specifically uh, in the walls of arteries. That is the, an artery at the surface of a human brain with dementia. And by the way, this is how I define color in life, the colors of you know, the, the brains and how we can stain them um, to, to best visualize the pathological processes. So in this case, the red shouldn't be there at all. It should be soluble, we all produce it, we eliminate it. However, this deposition of red of the human, of the amyloid beta occurs 20 years before symptoms arise. I have brains that I supp I'm supposed to use as controls to compare the demented brains with and I find amyloid in there. So it shouldn't be there. We should all be able to uh, dispose of this waste. However, the problem with our brains is that we do not have lymphatic vessels. After a long day of standing, especially in warm weather, ankles swell up. You can go home, put your feet up, the, um, you know, the, the fluid drains. The brain is not equipped like that. It does not have lymphatic vessels. Instead, what uh, um, we have demonstrated is that soluble material that we produce every day, because the brain is one of the most active, uh, well, it is the most active uh, uh, organ. So soluble material from the metabolic activity of the brain is eliminated along these tiny channels called basement membranes. They are about a millionth of the thickness of a human hair. And they serve the same function as lymphatic cells were in the body. So no wonder they get clogged up with certain factors that will alter the structure of um, the walls of the blood vessels. So one of the things, apart from, the, from increasing age, the other major risk factor for Alzheimer's disease is possession of a, a, a gene, a, genet a, um, a certain allele of a gene called APOE4. We don't know whether it, we're APOE4 positive or negative, but if we are positive, then we're at high risk of either heart attacks, myocardial infarction, or dementia. And it's interesting because this is the only sort of genetic link to the risk of getting dementia in older life, and that is um, uh, uh, the condition that is uh, major in women compared to men. So 60, if you take um, overall the population with dementia now in the UK, over 60% are women, 
about 39-40% are men. Um, so naturally, this receives a lot of interest. Um, there has been a uh, paper very recently that uh, tried to associate, attempted to associate the possession of this particular gene with um, uh, the, the risk of being female. But of course, um, it's an association study, so it's a snapshot. They had to go like the, the Barbara, the speaker this morning, very correctly said, you have to go through huge number of people. Um, the other problem, of course, is you have to look at dead brains, so you're looking at an end result, uh, because otherwise, in vivo, you don't know what kind of dementia it is. So there are numerous problems with trying to really tease into the mechanism as to whether APOE4 is more common in women or not. We ourselves have done uh, a study, a mechanistic study, using mice. The problem with mice is that they do not age in a similar manner to humans. So you can wait forever in a mouse. They will never develop atherosclerosis in the arteries of the brain unless you feed them a very uh, high-fat diet. But one thing is sure, uh, is certain, is that regardless of the sex of the mouse, if you knock out its own APOE uh, uh, gene and you replace it with a human APOE4, the mouse cannot clear the green fluorescent material that we inject uh, into the brain. Now this is actually um, a, a quite an interesting study that we are pursuing because it's about maternal diet and the risk of getting dementia. And I know that several speakers today, including Rana, has touched on the fact that um, you know, if the mother is smoking, that increases the, the chances, not just for the fetus, but for the, uh, 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 the, the fertility and the um, uh, uh, unborn baby's children. In our case, we have taken mice female mice, we have given them a high-fat diet, and then we examined not the female mothers, but the babies. Now, the babies were either fed a high-fat diet or a controlled diet. So we ended up with four groups, mother and baby normal diet, mother normal diet, baby high-fat diet, mother high-fat diet, baby normal diet, and both mother and baby high-fat diet. Can I just draw your attention, because this is scary, especially as, um, you know, I was looking back at my own pregnancy and what I've been eating with my son while I was pregnant with my son. Um, the, if the mother is fed a high-fat diet and you're just examining the potential of clearing waste from the baby's brain, the waste doesn't clear. And these are young Yes, admittedly, male baby mice, uh, but we are now, we're lucky enough to have the funding to continue uh, this study to see are these changes maintained in later life or not. So I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is that uh, it's not just the um, uh, uh, sex or the uh, uh, genetic background, but there is also a very strong epigenetic influence. So here, you are what your mother eats, or at least your brain is what, what your mother has eaten. Now, in order to get to some results and do something, because I've just presented a very grim picture here, uh, to do something about this wretched disease, we really have to team up with the people that are affected, and of course, with the uh, uh, funding bodies. Um, the other problem we're having is, of course, the brain, and especially the tiny vessels of the brain and the tiny channels within the vessels of the brain are impossible to visualize in vivo. Um, so we have to rely quite heavily on modeling and mathematical computational uh, modeling. Um, and that, of course, is, uh, is again, another uh, major aspect of uh, at least the research. 
Now, I wouldn't be able to do this research if I wasn't in an institution with the forward vision of equality, diversity, and inclusivity. Um, I'm honored to actually lead the committee and, and chair the committee that used to be the Athena Swan Action Committee. It's now for, uh, formed of a diverse pool of people, uh, all different backgrounds. Um, and uh, I, having secured Athena Swan Silver, of course, our next mission is uh, Athena Swan Gold. And um, I know we have the ambition of being, um, you know, one of the few medical schools that will achieve gold in the next very short period of time. But actually, as the title of my talk was Challenges and Opportunities, uh, all three of the, of the above, appraisal, mentoring, like Rana said, is, are they both challenges to make people do them, to, make, to, to, to try and empower people as they, they uh, approach in either appraisal, PPDRs, and really engaging in, in developing them, uh, in, in mentoring. Um, we're hoping to set up a national uh, bank of mentors, at least for the medical schools. And of course, something that we're quite proud of in Southampton is the well-being for staff, because if we're not actively doing something about stress at work, anxiety at work, um, uh, various problems that people carry with them day in, day out, day out at work, then we will never get the happy and engaging and collegial environment that people can actually be productive and work together well. So with this, I'll stop and I'll thank, of course, the very uh, diverse um, group, my, my uh, research group over there, my collaborators, very diverse set of um, uh, funding bodies because, like I said, we have to fund, uh, you know, brain banks. It's like um, online ordering now. We, or, we order our brains from different brain banks. One of it is actually, I was talking to Stephen Curry before, is in Imperial College. Um, mice, uh, and of course modeling, uh, mathematical and computational modeling. Thank you.